DC Multiverse! Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Today I present to you my review of the McFarlane Toys Zack Snyder Justice League Steppenwolf Finger. Finger. Figure. The Steppenwolf figure. His finger will be in it too, but so will the rest of him. It's over there on the review bench. Just, just have a look. No, no, not that. That's 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 a pile of mess. No, no, those are those are tent pegs. That's don't look at that. That's a disaster. Right there, there we go. That's the figure. Let's review it. And he is a big, big boy. Just how big? Well, you'll see during the comparisons. Anywho, box art for this guy. It's exactly the same as everything else from McFarland's line. Black, white, blue. And the side of the box saith Steppenwolf. And then we have a big old image of Steppenwolf on the back, as well as images of all the other Zack Snyder Justice League figures in the series. I've already reviewed all these, so feel free to go back in my watch list and check these out yourself if you'd like to. And if not, let's just get him out of the package. Okay, and he's out of the packaging, along with his Electro Axe, and his trading card, and also his sorely inadequate action figure stand. The trading card, as I always say, is the same image as the back of the box. And then there's, of course, a little bio on the back, which I always say you could pause to read if you would like to. Let's just throw it in the pile. Figure stand, of course, looks just like all the rest of them. Let's actually see if this thing is helpful a little bit later on in the video. And then that there, Electro Axe, which I will admit has been sculpted quite nicely. I do like the look of this, it looks nice. Uh, soft rubber, You're not quite as good as the one from Beast Kingdom, but definitely better than the Mattel version. And now that we've got all that out of the way, we can begin to look at the figure, and I've definitely got mixed thoughts about this guy. He looks fantastic, so I'll, I'll give him that. The, the, the sculpted detail in this guy looks really, really good. The body proportions are perhaps a little bit weird. Like, I seem to remember his torso being a little bit bigger than that. And close up, while the digital sculpting of this guy look pretty good, I feel like some of the paint wash kind of gets lost in the detail. I'm not really sure. It's it's one of those cases where I'm like, this looks great, but also kind of kind of not. Like, I'm not really sure how I feel about this. Todd's team did do a good job actually capturing the otherworldliness of this really bizarre sharp, pointy-looking armor. And it's kind of interesting that from a design standpoint, they, they went with, hey, none of the spikes that are sticking out are actually going to be equal and the same with the rest of them. And they're really not. You know, you got three over here, you got two here. Even on the helmet, it's the, the, the spikes just aren't the same. And I get that. It's because his armor is supposed to look like living armor. It moves around and stuff, so... You know, I, I totally get that. And also, look at how many fingers he's got. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't notice in the movie that he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fingers. He's got seven fingers. How many fingers does a guy need? All the better to pick my nut. You can't reach. What the heck? Uh, uh, uh. Well, I suppose we're going to see that the articulation may in some places leave something to be desired. But there are two things about this figure before I even get into the articulation that, that, that kind of rub me the wrong way. They leave a farty smell in the air. A bad taste in my mouth, if you will. For one, he's really top heavy, so I've gotten him to stand here. But if I just move him a little bit and try to stand him up again, he, you really gotta be careful. But it's how wonky he is. He's so wiggly. The torso articulation up in here is just, it's so loose. He looks like he should be on the disco floor. And then you've got the legs. And the legs with very, very little persuasion just, I mean, I'm going to push down lightly, okay? Whoa! See? That was barely anything. Oh, they're so loose. They're so loose. This is just like... And then the arms. Look at the arms. Look at the arms. Hold on a second, I gotta get the body straight so you can really see it. Okay, ready? So here's the arms. <laughs> they require very, very little pushing. And this, both arms are like that. And you're wondering, you're probably like, well, what's up with that? Well, look at this. Look at how loose they are in the shoulders. That's, that's not right. 
So all in all, a very loose, very wibbly, very gangly figure. Which means getting him to stand up without the legs, you know, wanting to splay outwards, without him wanting to fall backwards or forwards. Oh my god. Steppenwolf, stand up. You're making yourself look like a fool. There you go. Thanks, buddy. So, yeah, that's definitely something about this figure I'm, I'm not keen on. I'm, I'm actually terrified of sticking this guy on my figure shelf because you know the second that someone closes the door too hard and a gust of wind comes in the room, he's just gonna be like, up, I'm out, dominoes. As for the articulation points that he's got, well, he's got that head. That's actually, I'm, okay, I'm surprised. That's a lot more articulated than I thought it was going to be. You can go forwards and backwards and round and round. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. We know that he's got the rounded hinges up here and the loose, wibbly, wiggly shoulders. And what can he do? Up uh, about that. He's got a bicep swivel. <laughs> I'm trying to make it swivel, but it's it's so loose in here. <laughs> oh my god, and that is so it's like oh! okay, well, it's a bicep wiggly. I'm not sure. I suppose if I heated him up, I could get it to wiggle all the way around. And then his elbows. They go just, just 90 degrees. Don't let the angle of the hand fool you. That's a 90 degree angle only. I so wish he had more. Ah, oh, we can see that the hand, which is fit inside the wrist, can swivel. It's got a swivelly swivel like that. That's nice and tight, actually. And then he's got a hinge. Oh, he's got one of them weird, ugly hinges. Ah. Oh. Of course we know he's got the torso articulation, and that does have a really good range of movement. However, it's also quite jiggly. And then he's got the waist articulation as well. So he can bend down about that and lean back about that. That's actually pretty good. Look, you can see down his drawers. Of course he's got the ratcheted hinges in here, they don't really help much. <laughs> I can feel them trying to ratchet. You can kind of see where my fingers are stopping, where his legs are stopping, but they're not very tight. He's also got some of this thigh swivel like that. That's actually pretty good. And then the knees. What will he get in the knees? Uh, not quite 90 degrees. Oh, that's not good. Do they rotate though? Yes, they rotate. So I suppose that's something. And then you got, ouch, ow, that, that hurt. I got, I just got poked. No, I'm not complaining. I'm just, you know, pointing it out to be a little bit careful here. Anywho, he's got the rounded hinge. Of course, it's going to pivot. And then he's got toe articulation, individual toe articulation. I'm not really sure how helpful I would say that is on a figure that's top heavy and already quite wiggly. I mean, let's face it, if you want to get him into some, like, crazy battle pose, right? You need to have tight joints <laughs> for that. If you don't have tight joints, then your figure just wants to do that. So, there's no reason to have toe articulation on a figure that has joints so loose that you can do this with them. So, what do I think about this figure? Honestly, <sighs> I really, really wanted to like this guy a lot more than I actually do. The problem is, I can't trust him. Not because he's an intergalactic super baddie that is trying to get back into Darkseid's good graces, but based on the fact that I'm really not that keen on having to walk into my office and then pick up a domino-affected group of Zack Snyder Justice League figures that I'm posing with, and they're all on the floor, or they're laying on their backs, and they're all scratched and damaged because big old Steppenwolf decided to fall over. And yes, even with a stand, even with the stand, it's still really, really hairy because his body is just so strange and gangly. So this stand right here for him basically does nothing. So can I recommend you pick him up? Well, considering these mega figures are like 20 bucks more than your average McFarlane figure, I would say <sighs> pick up at your own risk. You've seen my review and you know exactly what you'll be getting, more than likely, if you pick one up yourself. So 
if you buy one and he's all wiggly and he falls down and he knocks your figures over and you end up really frustrated with him and then so then you put him in the backyard in a barrel and pour gasoline on him and light him on fire, well, and at least you went into it with me saying I told you so. I've warned you. You've been warned. He looks great, but he'll also frustrate you. Anyway, that's all I got to say today. Have a super awesome, fantastic DC day, everybody. And take care. Bye for now.